Sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Tony Marks. I'm the president of the New York Public Library, and I have been looking forward to this day. We're here for groundbreaking on a fantastic and much needed new Roosevelt Library. Uh, Roosevelt Island Library. The, uh, the, the, the current library, which is just down the street, I just visited there. I remember my first visit there. I got an earful saying this is just not good enough. So we've been working hard, particularly Iris Weinschel and her team, uh, but other partners we're going to talk about to get to this day and then to the day where we get to open uh, a library that will transform this former school behind me into a 5,200 square foot branch, doubling, more than doubling, the size of the existing one room branch just down the street. So that is great progress. Um, look, the, the current branch has been an absolute wonder. It's the, uh, it's the little library that could and does. Um, it was started in the 1970s as a one room volunteer operation the dream of Roosevelt Island residents Herman and Dorothy Reed, and in 1998, we're proud to say, it became a branch of the New York Public Library. But in the meantime, it has not stopped serving this community and its growing needs, and that's exactly as it should be. The last year, um, this little library, the current one, had 81,000 visits. So that is really incredible, and hats off to the team, um, manager, and, and everyone here who's made that possible. It's clear that the residents of this amazing island bears a powerful name in the history of the United States that we think about longingly these days, the, um, that the residents here love their libraries, and their new branch will get flexible space for shelving books, computer workstations, a reading area, a teen area, a circulation counter. It'll be, of course, ADA accessible. It'll be re-landscaped, including new plants. And I've just heard about some great plans for the space there behind the, behind the screen uh, with a river view. The building will be LEED Silver certified and most importantly, it will be open in late 2019. It will be open in late 2019. Yes, yes. <laughs> this project is part of an unprecedented amount of capital invested in our investment in our branches, um, which over 100 years have strengthened the communities across New York but have not always gotten the loving attention that they deserve. And that went on for too long. And with a $600 million investment, six to $700 million investment, we're working through the system. Just last week, we had a similar groundbreaking at the new Van Cortlandt Library in the Bronx, where also on my first visit, I got harangued by the staff appropriately for a much too small space. Since I went to high school three blocks from uh, that branch, they had me when I walked in the door. Um, look, this city, this city is only as strong as its public spaces. We have come to New York from all over the world because we know the power of bringing that energy together, to learning to live together and respect each other and to work together and to contribute to the great creativity and innovation that this city stands for and now Roosevelt Island uh, with your other new neighbors clearly stand for. We live in a moment when those ideals, the ideals that the library stands for, democracy, truth, inclusion and respect of learning and opportunity to move up are under threat. The library today dramatically puts another stake in the ground to say we're here, we're not going anywhere, we're getting better and 
bigger and stronger because we need to counter those threats and keep New York strong. None of that would be possible without the support of so many, and that's true in this project, in, as evidenced by this project, a $8 million project for which we are grateful for the support of Mayor Bill de Blasio, the former Manhattan Borough President and the current Comptroller, Scott Stringer, the Manhattan Borough President, Gail Brewer, City Council Member, Ben Kalos, New York State Senator, Jose Serrano, New York State Assembly Member, Rebecca Seawright, the former City Council Member and current President of the Downtown Alliance, Jessica Lappin. The, uh, I didn't get any applause. Right? <laughs> City, the City Department of Design and Construction, its great new commissioner, Lorraine Grillo, and thanks to the assistant commissioner, Oscar Gonzalez. On the list goes on, Laurie Hawkinson and Alex Cornhill-Smith. Uh, did I get that right? No, let's try, let's try it again. Laurie Hawkinson and Alex Cornhill from Smith Miller Hawkinson Architecture designed the new branch and of course essential because all these projects have to start from the ground up we have to hear what the community needs we need to engage in the conversations that have been going on for these past few years here and throughout the city and here in this case we're particularly grateful to uh, the, our partners on the Roosevelt Island community the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation the Roosevelt Island Community Literacy Associates, and Community Board 8, amongst others. I would also be remiss if I didn't take this moment to thank my amazing, amazing colleagues. Uh, Iris, our Chief Operating Officer, the Capital Planning and Construction uh, Division, headed by our Vice President, Risa Honig, and her team. Uh, and we also, of course, want to thank our Library Services team and leadership, also represented here, I saw Yolanda and Gazelle uh, and others, the government relations team. Uh, so many parts of the library come together to make this kind of a great day possible. So again, thank you for making that possible. Together, we will build the communities that we need and we will bolster the democracy that we depend on. Gail Brewer couldn't be with us today, uh, but Nelson Andino is here from our office, so we're grateful to Nelson for, for representing the, the borough president. Um, so I'm going to uh, now start by asking our great city council member, Ben Callos, to speak. Ben? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here on Roosevelt Island. I want to thank Tony Marks and the New York Public Library for being such great <laughs> operators of the local library here and their commitment to building us a new branch right here on Roosevelt Island. Can we give them a round of applause? I, I want to thank uh, my predecessor, council member, former council member Lappin, who in her time was able to identify a lot of the needs that we had, such as a need for a new library, uh, a need for investment in our esplanade. It gave me a list of things I needed to get done as soon as I got into office because the district was falling apart. It actually literally fell into the East River. And uh, we have been able to work together. Uh, and I even remember 10 years ago sitting with the council member across the river at Andrew Haswell Green and we actually broke, we, we actually cut the ribbon and opened it. But that took 10 years, and uh, I'm here to get things done. I don't have 12 years like folks used to. We only have eight years to get things done. And uh, we've been pretty busy. Uh, Cornell Tech got approved, but we got it built and opened. Uh, Blackwell House had been stalled for years, but the construction has started. We've partnered with Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation to build a new playground so that when we open up Blackwell, we'll have a great playground right next to it. The tram didn't actually have a license to operate, and we approved that at the council for the next 50 years. And I don't know if I'm missing anything in terms of transportation for the island. Oh, yes. 
we opened ferry service for Roosevelt Island. And all of this, every single step of the way, we've been in partnership with Susan Rosenthal, who is the best REAC president we've ever had. Can we give it a hand for REAC and their amazing team? I, I love this library. When I was running in 2013, I worked with a uh, local resident named Joe Strong. Incidentally, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Joe Strong, wherever you are. I know you're embarrassed right now. And uh, we worked on a multicultural, multilingual li language library. We partnered with NYPL to try to figure out how we can track the fact that the way NYPL tracks is based on how many people check books in and out. But what we found is people were using the foreign language books as reference material. So we worked with them to make sure that all the foreign language books, and this is one of the most multilingual communities in my district and in the city, and uh, we've been able to keep those libraries here on the island. We were even able to add uh, books to it. Uh, shortly after I got elected, uh, we did something extra special. We made our library a literary landmark for all the books, for all the history, for all the stories uh, here. And you can actually find the plaque here, and we're hoping we'll move it over to this library. And I just have to say, that uh, to keep these projects on track and get them done quickly is no easy task. Unfortunately, the New York Public Library wasn't tasked with building this. If they had, this would have been done a long time ago. Uh, it was tasked with a company called the DDC, Department of Design and Construction. And earlier this year, we got advised by DDC that they weren't going to start work until 2021, right about after I was going to leave office which was staggering to me that a project that could be conceived in a previous council member term would not even start then, could survive another council member and still not happen. We partnered with our Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer who led the way, our state senator Jose Serrano, our assembly member Rebecca Seawright and I. We went to the new leader, uh, Lorraine Grillo, who has a reputation for getting things done quickly and on time. And we got this project back on track and as you heard, we're breaking, we, as you see, we're breaking ground now. And as you will, as you've heard, and uh, with Lorraine Grillo, I think it's a guarantee we'll be opening in 2019. Uh, so this is great news, and I can't wait to use this brand new library and for everyone here to have a chance to use it. And I just want to thank the 81,000 folks who come to this library every day. You make it special, you keep it open. And with the new library, I'm hoping we can boost uh, readership and uh, get more folks using this literary landmark and I have to apologize I may have to step out uh, they want to build a building on 58th Street that will be so tall it will cast a shadow on Roosevelt Island and I don't think that you should have to live in the shadows of billionaires so I'm suing the city and I have to be in court at 11 a.m. <laughs> Good luck with those millionaires, Ben. The, um, I, I do want to point out that the city council made a $5.3 million contribution to this project. So again, thanks to Ben and the leadership of the city council and the mayor. That's fabulous. Um, I, I neglected a few folks. I see Carol Soriano is here. Uh, Carol's our chief branch library officer. Um, so wonderful to have you here. Uh, on the government relations team, Nora and George are here, and uh, so thank you. Uh, Amy, I thought Angela from communications, really thank you all, and I'm sure I've missed many. Uh, let's, uh, we've heard about him, uh, we all know about him. Please join me in welcoming New York State Senator Jose Serrano. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad to be here, and honestly, I can't contain my excitement about this new library branch. It's such a wonderful uh, addition to this community. I'm so blessed uh, to represent Roosevelt Island in the State Senate. Uh, this is easily one of the most diverse communities anywhere in the city of New York. Um, and it really, this really is a, a labor of love for so many. Um, the current elected officials, former uh, council member Jessica Lappin, for many years of work in ensuring that we got a library renovation, that we got a new library on the island that would be uh, that would be appropriate for the amount of use that we have here. 
As many of you know, I have two young children, ages 12 and 6, my son Carlos uh, and my daughter Sophia. And especially in the summer, when I have events on the island, I'll bring them with me, and they make a beeline for the library. And they will stay in there. Library staff knows them well. Uh, and they, they love the library. Even though it, the current space is small, they love it. They can't get enough of it. And all of the libraries that I'm fortunate enough to represent or the ones near my home, uh, the ones near their school, we sort of map our, our life around the location of our libraries because they are so important. Uh, and they're transformative. Libraries are one of the things that I believe are pillars in our society. Uh, they make tremendous difference in communities. Um, they allow uh, uh, families to gain the education, the knowledge, the work on uh, things like ESL and work on resumes and so on to help excel, uh, to do better in their way of life. And libraries are a pillar and transformative in that way in so many other ways. Additionally, when we think about the times that we live in now, where we see so much bigotry and uh, unfortunately a lot of intolerance, uh, rhetoric throughout, uh, throughout the discourse, not just of politics but in society, um, I believe, and I, I believe many of you also share this belief, that the strongest weapon against bigotry and intolerance is knowledge. And our libraries are a beacon of knowledge where we gain the tools that we need to become a better society and better people. So when I think about ways that we as a government can do things to fortify our community, not just now, but for generations to come, I could think of no better investment than in our library system. So I want to thank Tony Marks, uh, the uh, entire library staff, uh, Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation, and all of the staff here for ensuring that this becomes a reality. Congratulations. Thank you, Senator. I, I want to underline one of the points that Senator made. So in addition to uh, system-wide, a total of about a billion dollars of capital improvement, which is just unprecedented and long time coming, um, we're also transforming our branch libraries. They still need to be the essential civic space with quiet reading areas, computers, books, and of course our amazing librarians as the key. But we're also massively increasing the educational programs we can provide. Whatever every neighborhood needs, from early literacy, partnering with the public schools, to after school programs to help our students succeed, to college preparedness programs to get them into college, to English language, instruction the largest in the city for free outside the schools, computer skills training, coding the largest for free outside of the schools in the city. We are approaching two million visits a year in the system to those relatively new educational programs and this branch doubling in size will make it possible for us to continue to do that in this essential neighborhood. Next up, our assembly member, Rebecca Seawright. Good afternoon. It's fabulous to be here for this very special occasion. I want to thank the uh, library leadership, President Marks, my dear friend Iris Weinshell, our branch manager, my colleagues in government, and especially to a former council member Jessica Lappin for your support of this wonderful project. Thank you, Jessica. I see so many friends and leaders out in the audience. Judy Birdie from the Historical Society and Matthew Katz, and I also want to give a shout out to Susan Rosenthal who's doing a phenomenal job as the head of REOC. From its first days as a neighborhood, Islanders recognized how important the library is to this community. I was proud to secure 625000 this past legislative session for the three libraries in my district, and when I go back to Albany, I will continue to fight and push for additional funding. The libraries are so important, and it's a wonderful occasion to be here today for this groundbreaking. Thank you. So you've heard about, and you know and love, Jessica Lappin. When she was in the city council representing Roosevelt Island and elsewhere, uh, we had a meeting that we both remember fondly. 
Uh, I'm told you can find it on YouTube, but I urge you not to do that. The, um, in which we talked about what we hoped would happen here. You know, it is so appropriate that Jessica could join us for this coming to fruition moment. With her help and, and a couple million dollars of support when she was on the city council. Oh, thanks. It's, um, it's, it's fun sometimes to walk down memory lane. And I was coming in, I was talking to Matthew and Sherry, uh, who said, how long have we been talking about this? And, and Rick, too, was looking back in some of his files. Um, I, I, will, I remember very clearly sitting in Mary Camper Titsing's living room, may she rest in peace, uh, in 2005. And I made a campaign promise that we would someday expand and renovate the library. And it took a while, <laughs> but it's happening. And that's really what's important. Um, I use the public library. I think more importantly, my children do uh, all the time. E-books, regular books. We go just to sit and hang out on rainy days when we're cooped up in our apartment in the winter. Um, and it's free. I mean, that's really the crux of it. It is free. It is universal access to knowledge. And books transport us, they teach us, uh, they are really the key to growth for us and for our society. And there's really, in my mind, no more important community facility than a library. And so, while you've had one, won't it be nice to have one? Um, where it, when it rains there isn't water dripping through because <laughs> water's not so great for books um, and and you'll have more space and just it, it will continue to enrich uh, the community here in our city so it's it's really you know you don't get to do this many um, sort of fun things when you're in office or when you're out of office and it's just a pleasure to be here to celebrate this moment with you so thank you So as I say, we are, uh, we're so excited about the new leadership at uh, the DDC uh, and Lorraine, and, and we know uh, we're going to be great partners and continue to do more and better, and therefore we are so delighted to have the DDC represented here uh, with its new dynamic team, the Assistant Commissioner, Oscar Gonzalez. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you, NYPL, for the opportunity to work with you. Um, a little bit about DDC, Department of Design and Construction. Uh, we are the ones that help manage the process. We help manage the capital projects. We hire the architects. We hire the, con the contractors. We bring everybody together. We work through the process, the bureaucratic process. Sometimes it does take a while, and I'm not going to deny it. There has been a lot of discussions on how long this has taken, but uh, I'm giving my commitment no more delays. We have a, we have the architects on board, they're gonna come out, they're gonna check. We have the contractor, we have a very reputable contractor, XBR, which is here, uh, headed by, um, by Peter, um, and we are uh, making a commitment to deliver the original scope of the project by the end of next year. Um, so, with that said, uh, just wanna give thanks to the community because the vision actually starts with you. Okay, you come out, you have a vision, we get out to the elected officials, we, uh, they provide the financials, the, fin the financial support. So I want to thank you, the community, I want to thank the elected officials for uh, uh, making this uh, opportunity. Um, again, I want to thank NYPL for uh, allowing us to participate. Uh, yes, they can do their own work. Yes, there are other agencies that uh, they can uh, uh, partner up with but they have decided to partner up with us and we are going to be able to f uh, fulfill this, um, this project and we'll, you know, we'll get it through completion. Um, Tony had already mentioned some of the uh, scope that we're doing um, on the project. We're doing a brand new efficiency, uh, uh, excuse me, energy efficient 5,200 square foot library to replace a smaller one down the street. Uh, we talked about the uh, new accommodations, such as separate multi-use community rooms for events and activities. Uh, it's also going to have an uh, audio induction loop to help the hearing impaired. Uh, we're going to have a separate children's area, uh, which is going to be with glass doors and glass partitions. Um, the entryway is going to be op it's going to open up to a flexible space with shelving for books, computer workstations, a reading area, a teen area, and a 
Circulation Center. Um, the entire branch is going to be fully ADA accessible. Uh, it's going to be it's gonna, there's going to be a canopy here in the front uh, to enhance public safety. Um, the area surrounding the entryway, uh, just right over here, it's also going to be re-landscaped with new plantings, exterior book drop, bench seating to also serve as a local bus stop. Um, everything is going to be designated to meet LEED silver standards for environmental sustainability with new high efficiency HVAC and other mechanical equipment in the basement and on the roof. So we're going to have automated climate control. Um, we're going to be incorporating LED lighting and low flow plumbing fixtures which will make use of sustainable materials with minimal levels of volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs. Uh, so, you're getting a lot. This is going to be an outstanding project. I uh, want to thank the mayor, Bill de Blasio. I also want to thank our new DDC commissioner, Lorraine Grillo, our first deputy commissioner, Jamie Torres, and everything that they do for DDC. Uh, I want to acknowledge my project team and also my boss, uh, Deputy Commissioner Tom Foley, uh, plus my, uh, my direct team, uh, Gus Kritaris, uh, my director, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Giltinen, Anthony Mayer, Tofik Tofik, Jeffrey Sharp, Jeffrey Sandek, uh, Andrew Merges, Mackenzie Payne, Norma, and many others that are in DDC, uh, with budget, with contracts, um, our project controls teams, there's a, quite a few people that have been involved in this project. Uh, again, I want to thank our architect, uh, Lori Huckinson with uh, Smith, Miller and Huckinson's Architects. Uh, she's right over there. Uh, XPR, Peter, Peter raise your hand, you, you got a lot to do over here. So, um, And uh, I want to thank everybody and uh, I'll see you guys at the ribbon cutting next year. All right. Thank you, Oscar. As Oscar said, as we've all said, none of this is possible without our partners in the local community. Please join me, you've heard about her already, um, in welcoming the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation President and CEO, Susan Rosenthal. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, first, I'd like to thank all of our public officials for taking such an extraordinary interest in our community. Um, I think this project is very exciting. It's going to bring new excitement to Main Street. And you know anything that brings invigoration to Main Street is exciting to me. So um, we waited a long time. I promised Oscar Gonzalez I wouldn't say anything negative about the delay. So I'm not going to. But we're thrilled that it's here. Um, Oscar will be working with our... Uh, man in charge of capital projects, Steve Noon. Steve, raise your hand so people know to bother you when you're on the street. Um, and Oscar uh, and Steve will be working on um, our part, that is Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation's part in this project. We're going to be doing some grading that has to be done. There's that small area outside that we'd like to create a beautiful design for um, to go with a beautiful new library. Um, I'd also like to point out that uh, I see Erica Spencer L. Raise your hand, Erica. She's our Director of Community Relations, and she's been talking to the library's branch manager about um, projects we're going to be doing together because, um, as you probably all know, and maybe some of you don't, we're renovating the Youth Center, which is the neighbor to the new public library. And that youth center will be right there. And as neighbors, we're hoping that the library and the youth center have programs uh, for our youth. And I know that that's, uh, they've talked, they've started to plan, and that's something to look forward to in the future. Um, personally, uh, I guess it was about four months ago, I walked into the library. I hadn't used a public library since my children were small, and I said, why not? met, introduced myself to the branch manager, and uh, I'm now taking out books. So I encourage everybody, if you don't have a library card, it's fantastic. You don't have to buy books. Uh, I still like holding books as opposed to Kindle. So please, go sign up. Uh, the staff is fantastic, helpful, and I know uh, that we have some 
a great future together in this new space. So thank you all. Thank you, Susan. I also read books the good old-fashioned way. I even wrestle with the New York Times the old-fashioned way on the subway, the way my daddy taught me. The, um, but I do want to point out, as was just referenced, if that doesn't work for you, download the Simply E app from the App Store. Just showing it to, to Ben. The um, one click you're in, one more click you're reading one of thousands of titles on any device that you want. And we will be massively expanding those, uh, those possibilities going forward. So we want everything to be possible through the library. Uh, next up, uh, Roosevelt Island Community Literacy Associates Board Member. Lorraine Lasker. Lorraine. Good morning, friends. The Community Library was created in 1979 by volunteers, members of a new residential community. They began with an ambitious concept, a library manned by volunteers, stocked with donated books and open to all residents for a membership fee suited to an economically diverse community. Success made the original Westview facility immediately too small. Aided by our then assemblyman, Pete Granis, the library moved in two years to its current location. To enhance fundraising, we incorporated in 1989 as a not-for-profit known as the Roosevelt Island Community Literary Associates. Rickla's principal purpose was to sponsor and operate the community library which we did for almost 20 years. By the mid-90s, the library was a major resource for the island's young people researching school assignments, much of it with the help of the volunteer reference librarians. The library's collection had grown to more than 30,000 volumes, cataloged and shelved according to the Dewey Decimal System. In June of 1998, we were fortunate to morph into the 85th NYPL branch. Based on a consulting survey of residents, it was revealed that the library is truly the most beloved presence on Main Street. The consultants recommended relocation of the library to 504 Main Street. I quote, the civic presence of the relocated library would anchor the gateway to Main Street on the east side, where it would be that much more a centerpiece of the island. The seed that was planted at Westview on almost 40 years ago will be harvested here at 504 Main. A last word. It is important that libraries get the recognition they deserve. In an age of polarization and inequality, the library is a bedrock of civil society. If we have any chance of rebuilding a better society, social infrastructure like the library is precisely what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine, for those inspiring words. And again, because the community is essential, we want to invite up one of the uh, regular patrons of the Roosevelt Island Library, Sophia Wolstenholm, with a guest appearance by Grant. Hello. <laughs> He's just fallen asleep. So, um, Thank you, first of all, for inviting me to come speak here today at the groundbreaking ceremony. It's truly an honor. Um, we, I come to the library every week with my kids. 
Um, we frequent the story times with Miss Jen. They're great. She puts on all sorts of toddler activities and events um, every month. Station exploration, movers and shakers. I mean, there's really pretty much anything. And the best part about it all is that it's free. So in New York, that's really a big deal. Um, so we try to come every week, sometimes several times a week. We could probably live in the library. Um, they have a big selection of books, and for us it's really important that they're in all sorts of languages. At home I speak German to my kids, and uh, Ms. Jen has gone out of her way to source books in German from all the other libraries in New York and bring them here to Roosevelt Island for me to pick up, which has just been really great. And it's also convenient to go online and just look at the, at the books that they have there. Primarily we, I check out kids' books, obviously for my kids, and um, yeah, I've kind of you know, unearth a little bit of a appreciation for books myself again, you know, since becoming a library member. Um, yeah, so it's really a great meeting place for, for everybody in the community, especially for the kids. They have the kids' corner. That's why we're so excited for the new library to be open so that we can contain them a little bit better and not be disturbing everybody that's trying to have a little bit of peace and quiet at the library because our toddlers can get a little bit loud and rowdy at times. So I have to say thank you to the staff for putting up with them. Um, and uh, yeah, especially to Miss Jen because you do such a great job. Um, and also, yeah, everybody is just really friendly and helpful at the library and we're so happy to have this new place for them to, to just better, bigger facility for, for the staff and for the community and it's so great to see them at all the events that Roosevelt Island has in the community as well. Um, the Fall Festival just recently down there, we had library events as well, or library staff there. Um, so yeah, so thank you and we're so excited to have the new library here. Um, I don't know if my daughter wants to say it. So I grew up using my local branch in Inwood, um, which is also about to have a complete redo, uh, a new library also in that case, um, as we work our way through the boroughs. And as I've worked my way through visiting every branch, um, I think in many instances four or five times now over the years for each branch, not all, but um, one thing is absolutely obvious to me. The power of the library is in the staff. The, the, the sense of respect and welcoming, the competence, the service, the publicness um, is just astonishing, breathtaking. And it really is why the library is the foundation stone of every neighborhood and of the civil society that we need renewed and restored in this city and in this country. So it seems most appropriate that we, begin, that we end this set of remarks with a representative, therefore, of the stars of the show, the staff of the library. Please join me in welcoming this branch's library manager, Carlos Chavez. Thank you, Tony, for your wonderful introduction of the Roosevelt Island Library. And thank you to all our elected officials that are here today in support of the branch. I am Carlos Chavez, manager of the Roosevelt Island Library, and I am delighted to welcome everyone here today. I also want to thank the Roosevelt Island Library team, Ms. Bogan, who has been serving the community longer than the rest of us, I have learned so much from you. Jennifer, our children's librarian, the amazing work that you do every day inspires me. Justin, our adult librarian, thank you for all the library services you provide. Anthony Wins and Anthony Amarico, you guys do everything from shelving books to teaching computer classes and leading book discussions. I am very lucky to have you as my team. So many dedicated patrons here today. Judy Birdie, president of the Roosevelt Island Historical Society. 
Thank you for all your support. And Sophia and her family who attend many of our programs. The Roseville Island Library has been serving the community since the 1970s under the leadership of Dorothy and Herman Reed. Since it became a part of the New York Public Library system in 1997, it has been an honor to provide resources and services to the community. Some of our most popular programs include Toddler Storytime, Baby Lapsed, Chess for Kids, and of course, our historical lectures from our colleagues at the Historical Society. Although our branch is very small, the support of our patrons is always grand. That is why we consider it an honor and a privilege to offer them the resources and services they need. We're very excited about the new, larger Roosevelt Island Library. It will provide us with the opportunity to expand what we currently offer and consider new programs that our patrons are interested in. This is an exciting time for the Roosevelt Island Library, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you all back for our reopening. Thank you so much. No more speeches. <laughs> so it's Groundhog Day. We're going to, um, we're going to shovel some dirt and uh, have an official groundbreaking and take some pictures. So please, everyone who's, uh, who's got a shovel coming and a hard hat if you want it. Can we just back up? Yeah. Down in front, excuse me. Hold on. Get in here. Get in here. Got another one. One more. Let's say you got big room for one more. All these iPhones. All right, so you know the drill? A little bit of dirt, not a lot of dirt. <laughs> Don't throw it at anybody, just thing. go forward. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah.